Serious, what's a scary science fact that the public knows nothing about? Grapefruits completely duck with a shitload of prescription medications. Edit, grapefruits. Not grapefruits. Probably the most common one that will affect the general healthy individual is that it can duck with some contraceptive pills. Ain't got no time for no grapefruit baby. Edit, there seems to be a few worried people so just for clarification it's probably not going to actually get you pregnant, it may really ramp up those pesky side effects due to its interacts with estrogen production though so still worth considering. That's an expensive citrus. Decopon move over. If your dog swims in a lake after receiving a spot on flea treatment, it absolutely decimates the invertebrate population. A large dog swimming in eight Olympic swimming pools worth of water soon after treatment will leach enough neurotoxin to kill 50% of the lake's invertebrate population within 48 hours. I say after I mean relatively soon after, within say a day, to have an effect quite this device dating. The leaching does reduce over the month, but it's still there and the effect of multiple dogs still allows for a terrible buildup of chemicals. This has blown my mind. What are the active chemicals that cause this? Imidacloprid, permethrin and methoprene. I only recently learned that when you get sunburned, the burn isn't because of skin cell damage. The UV radiation damages the DNA. Then the skin cells decide to commit suicide and fall off so that the damaged DNA doesn't produce cancer. You'll never be mad at my skin peeling again. When doing an autopsy they don't put the organs back where they belong, they are all stored in the belly. All together in a bag, like giblets in poultry. If you're exposed to rabies and start to show symptoms, your chance of survival is virtually 0%. We give our pets rabies vaccines. Are there rabies vaccines for people? Yes, and they're effective at preventing the disease after you've been exposed to it as long as you aren't displaying symptoms yet. Brain aneurysms can be completely unpredictable and can happen at any time in your life no matter how healthy you are. A kid who I went to high school with at the age of 16 just did not wake up one morning and his cause of death was a brain aneurysm. There are alternative ways some proteins can form tertiary structures, these different structures make the protein unable to function. These alternate protein structures are infectious and incurable as they are so stable. If you get some in your blood they will slowly convert your own proteins when making contact. They're called prions. It gets worse. All of the diseases they cause are horrific progressive nightmares that aren't just incurable, but untreatable. And they're all 100% fatal. There's one that just stops you being able to sleep. It has two forms, fatal familial insomnia, where the prion is inherited, and sporadic fatal insomnia, where the prion is not inherited. You start off having difficulty sleeping, which causes mental health issues such as panic attacks and paranoia. Then you start getting hallucinations then you completely lose the ability to sleep then finally dementia, insanity and death it's universally fatal and usually kills you within about 18 months, sometimes as fast as 7. There's a woman in America who has it. She and her husband were both starting out in their well-paying careers when she found out she has fee. I think her mom died from it. But anyway, she and her husband quit their jobs and started school all over to become researchers to find a way to cure fee before it affects her. Last I checked, a few years ago, she was still alive. Not sure how their research is going. It's really ducking scary and sad though. She got pregnant, I think with IVF to make sure she didn't pass on the gene. She hasn't been diagnosed with it, but her mother died of it and after testing they determined she was at very high risk of developing the disease herself. Heart muscle cells don't reproduce much in adults, roughly 1% per year. If you have an infarction or other stressor that kills those cells, then your heart won't be able to grow new cells to replace the dead ones. This is why patients with diseases like heart failure end up needing a heart transplant. Trying to get this process to happen is a major goal for many cardiac researchers. Edit, thank you all for making this such an engaging and interesting discussion. I've been studying heart cells for 10 plus years now, basic scientist, no clinical training, and it's so refreshing to read many diverse perspectives and on-point questions. Also why cocaine should be used very, very infrequently, if at all, as it's directly cardiotoxic. Edit, dudes I'm not a doctor I can't give you medical advice edit, just google drug plus cardiotoxicity people. Research the duck out of shit before you try it and test shit with reagents for god's sake it's so easy and cheap. 
I was a heavy cocaine user for a while and I still have weird dull pain in my heart at times that like lightly goes all the way down my left arm briefly. I used to get these pains all the time and my left arm and fingers would get cold when I was using a lot of cocaine. I'm talking several grams by myself with lots of cigarettes and speed. Been clean for a while now. Life is much better. Edit, just want to say this, I was a man who could not stop using cocaine, no matter how hard I tried. I didn't get clean overnight and it was a difficult path to sobriety with several relapses along the way. But it was worth it. Every day I wake up and I take a minute to remember how grateful I am to be sober. Any addict who is seeing this, there is hope and there is a life worth living free of drugs and alcohol. Feel free to contact me if you are struggling. Edit 2, I'm going to see a cardiologist now that y'all have webbed me. Best talk to a doc and get that checked out. If that is angina, carrying nitro tablets might be a good thing. The universe's Higgs field might be metastable, a false vacuum, and decay at any moment, destroying everything. I came here for vacuum decay. Ah instantaneous oblivion. Either it all works out, or suddenly it's not my problem anymore. Before the vaccine, the number of people who have had HPV infection, and have had at least one sexual partner, was 85% in females and 91% of males. By far the most common STI. Worth elaborating there are a ton of strains, and most of them are relatively harmless. Only a couple produce notable symptoms or issues, so most people never have any clue they have it. Anthrax spores can remain viable for decades in the soil or animal products such as dried or processed hides and wool. I heard of issues coming up with those tough mudder type obstacle courses. Company rents out a field, digs up the mud, mud is contaminated with agricultural runoff, aka feces, and people get all kinds of infections and viruses. Limic eruptions. There are pockets of CO2 trapped under lakes all around the world that can be released at any time creating an invisible tidal wave that kills everything in its path. Since it's heavier than air you will just suddenly start choking and die. It's only been recorded twice, in two lakes very close to each other. It's exceptionally rare or requires incredibly specific circumstances, such as proximity to volcanic activity, and a lake where the deeper waters and shallow waters never mix, 99.9% .9 of lakes mix at least once a year. It also must have a cool lake bed despite being in an area with high volcanic activity. Update, by popular demand, the WHO research paper on requirements for safe drinking water formaldehyde and drinking water. A lot of people in rural towns with an elevated cemetery around, this happens in Ireland a lot. There is formaldehyde leaking into the drinking water. But it won't kill you, but the thought of drinking dead people juice is probably equally bad. Sorry not sorry. Update, I have a PDF link to the scientific research paper from WHO concerning the requirements for safe drinking water, and it covers the entire formaldehyde and drinking water issue, if anyone is interested. I read it and I can confirm it's true, but not detrimental to your health, even long term. Totally not me thinking the water was tasting weird recently, I happen to live in Ireland. Scientists don't know exactly how acetaminophen works to relieve pain and reduce fever. They have an idea but nothing for sure. But yet it's the most commonly used pain reliever in the world. This is actually true of a large number of medications. The plague is still out there. The bubonic plague is endemic in many parts of the world but cases are very rare because we've got it pretty well handled. If there's a general breakdown in society like a nuclear war, supervolcano eruption or asteroid impact? It's out there waiting to come back. DuPont knowingly infected over 90% of the American population with foes, a harmful plastic that has a half-life of 20 years. Lawsuit is still ongoing but no one seems to be bothered at it. This link will talk about the different trials and settlements that DuPont and companies alike have faced also talks about what a PFOA and its dangerous effects. I heard that it's actually worldwide, John Oliver did a segment and he spoke of a study where a team went to pretty much every continent and everyone has a bit of PFOAs in their blood BC of it. This is actually a major scandal in Belgium right now. An American company called 3 Meters apparently knowingly dumped large amounts of foes, similar to PFOAs, in Belgian waterways which ended up in the drinking water. Our government knew of that but kept silent about it for the right price, until someone exposed everything to the public. Of course everyone is now playing that the values were just below dangerous so it's not a big deal game, to distract from the straight-up crimes they committed. 
microplastics revealed in the placentas of unborn babies. Also, our fruits and veggies are soaking up microplastics through their roots brain damage and behavioral disorders in fish induced by plastic nanoparticles delivered through the food chain mouse study shows microplastics infiltrate blood brain barrier immunology, a dive into plastic toxicity in our immune system. Of course like every chemical we want to pass the blood brain barrier doesn't, but literal GD plastic does. Coat the plastics in medicine. Boom, treatment.